Hi everyone, Meg Hogan here. I wanted to talk a little bit about the free monthly financial tracker that you've all probably been given, but if not, you can always download it off my site. So why do we do this? Why do we measure our personal finance? It's quite simple really, I think, is we want to keep track of where we're going and are we growing? Are we not growing? What areas are sort of increasing or decreasing? And how long could we survive with our, our sort of personal wealth? So it's interesting. I find it's something that, you know, can be automated a little bit more over time. But for the first instance, I'd probably do it every month. Uh, and then you can break it out into quarterly once sort of you get, you know, in sync with how sort of the information can be pulled. So well, let's just go through it. I've got it on my screen here at the moment. So if you see my eyes looking down, that's what I'm looking at as well, just to keep in sync with what you're seeing. Okay, so we start off with your earned income. Earned income can be things like your job, employment, gross wages. Now, when we say gross wages, it means the ones, the amount that you've earned before tax. So put that in uh, and then down below in your expenses, you'll actually have your tax component and so forth. So you can actually do it that way. If you wanted to do it without getting nitty gritty into the tax, just take it off and do your net and you won't put anything into the expenses. So I tend to find I like to do gross because you know, this was really the money that was awarded to me. Uh, and then I pay my dues from that. So I'm thinking, you know, I want to know exactly how much I've earned over that time frame. And it's rewarding to know that it's a higher figure, not a lower figure. Okay, so <clears throat> we've also got asset cash flow income. So if you've got some assets that are creating some cash flow, put that down in there. Um, your business employment, your drawings and so forth. So anything that you're doing through a business or many businesses and you're getting a drawing from it, put it back into that figure there. So then you'll total up what's your earned income. You've also got another lot of income, which is your passive and your portfolio income. Passive income is just means, you know, physical, tangible assets. And there'll be things like investment, real estate properties, your own personal house, which is called your PPR, your personal place of residence, um, and putting down what you think the gross is that you're earning from these assets. So when I have your personal um, PPR, your personal place of residence, um, that particular one there might be that you're maybe hiring out a room. It might be that you're hiring out at some storage space or car parking space. Maybe you've got someone who's paying you some money for some signs or something like that. Um, it's where you're making an income off your personal place. Maybe you've just gone away for a little while and you're renting it on Airbnb for a little while and you're coming back. Um, they're all things to consider that if you're making an income off a physical asset, you stick it in here. So portfolio income, that's paper assets. That's anything that sort of is done more virtually on paper, um, probably easier to get money back out of straight away if you needed to, if you don't have to sell it, sort of you can just open or close things and so forth. So it's things like bank interest, share dividends, any royalties that you get anyway. Okay, then total up these three areas and you'll get your total lot of income that's coming in um, to you. <clears throat> Next, we have your expenses. Now, everyone loves expenses because expenses are the things that we all love to spend on, but don't want to tell anyone. So honestly, be truthful about it. Um, so this is all about your personal finance. So make sure you've got all the nitty gritties that are in there. Taxes that you've paid on your income. So they go in there. Um, your expenses on any real estate. So you're looking at uh, for an investment, you've got exactly the same as your PPR, which includes your rates, your waters, your insurances, any management fees and so forth. So um, utilities, electricity and gas, your phone, which is your mobile and your landline, childcare, food and clothing, other expenses which are ad hoc, which could be like um, parking, fuels, you know, whatever else, that train tickets, whatever to get to transport, to get to work. Tithing contributions and donations, that's very important to me. I think everyone, if they're earning some money, should be able to work on paying it forward, getting a little bit back out. And what that does is it helps to circulate the money in the economy. It also says to the universe out there that you're actually open for receiving because you're giving. So uh, I want to be seen as, uh, as good for receiving, so I will actually live in abundance, so therefore I give. I also give for the reason being that there's many out there that, that sort of need your help and you are more better off than some of the others. So, you know, it's your duty basically to give a little bit back. Um, so we're also looking at there your expenses on your credit cards, your loans, car loans. Uh, sorry, when I say car loan, that's the only loan that I want to see that's, that's coming into here. 
um, and your leisure spends. Okay, so once we total that one up, what we're looking at is your income minus your expenses will equal, equal your monthly cash flow. Then we're just going to go over to the other side. Let me just move my little sheet here that I'm sort of looking at at the same time while I'm talking to you. Assets. I find some people find this a little bit interesting. They go, oh, I don't really know if it's an asset or a liability or what it is. And I don't really know if it means it's income or I'm just not really sure. So let me put it into place for you. An asset is anything that actually creates cash flow from something that you purchased or whatever, and it can be resold at another point. So the assets you might have is bank accounts. You could have stocks and bonds. You could have superannuation, um, investment um, sort of liquid accounts like term deposits and so forth. Um, you could have real estate, investment real estate. You could have your own PPR uh, real estate. You could have your business basically. Now this is an interesting one. If you're going to put down fair market values, let's have a look at this. If you've got um, real estate, what I'd be doing is working out, okay, from the city centre, you might be 30 minutes away. Okay, and then I'd be looking at houses all that are 30 minutes away, so in that belt. And then if it's got three bedroom, two bathroom and a shed, double lock up shed, um, and it's about 700 square metres, I'd be looking at properties all around that sort of sta stage and then going, okay, three of those, that's roughly what my place is worth. Um, it's not really looking on your street, even though some areas are better than other areas. Um, just do that as a basic comparison. So you don't need to spend much time on there. You just need to know what some of the suburbs are that are around the same sort of distance from the city. Um, usually what I do is if I'm on the south side, I will pick one on the north side. If I'm on the east side, I pick one on the west side, just so I can sort of see the same sort of boundary area. Okay, um, and for your business value. Now, it's interesting. What your turnover is, it's usually if you're going to sell that, you'd want to try and sell it for 1.5 times is the multiplier. So if you earned, say, tree lopping, if you earned $500,000 that year, I'd be looking to sell that business for $750,000. Okay, that would be my business value. So obviously, once you've got your assets there, subtotal that one up there. We've also got another little area there that's sort of coded. It's called nonsense spending. Now, nonsense spending are things that you purchase, but they're probably not going to retain their value. They're probably not going to appreciate. They're going to depreciate. So I've just put those ones in there, meaning that if you're going to go and sell it again, if you bought it for $100, you're probably only going to sell it for $10 if you're lucky. Okay, so they go into there. And yes, home and contents, things like that. Banks love that. They want to say, yes, you've got stuff that I can sell and therefore, you know, reap our money back and it's, it's a better guarantee. But for our personal thing, we know that a lot of the items that we'll put there on nonsense spending they're not going to get the money that we want or we'll say that they're valued at. Okay, so make sure you put those ones in there. So it could be house and contents, uh, home, uh, sorry, lounges, fridges, you know, whatever the furnishings you put in your house. It could be your cars. Um, it's going to depreciate over time. It's not going to grow. Um, and other goods, you know, that you might have. So put them in there. So then we're going to total up what is our assets. I'm going to put them into here. And I've got it in two sections there, as per the bank. The bank will include this nonsense spending one, so the asset subtotal plus the non-spending, uh, nonsense spending, so put that one in there. And then for us, the financial tracker, we just put the total assets. So we put that one into there. Okay, liabilities. Liabilities are anything that you've got a contractual agreement with it with an expiry date. So things like you know credit cards, car loans, student loans, um, your PPR, your mortgages, um, your investment mortgages, your store cards, your personal loans and any other debt. So um, and just remember that they are segregated by a contractual agreement. So to work out our net worth um, for the bank, we're looking at our assets plus our nonsense spending minus our liabilities will equal our net worth for the bank. For our net worth for our financial tracker will just be your assets minus your liabilities, which will come on this section here. Now, these are the interesting things that when you know that you're growing, you're going to see these areas picking up all the time. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to my little sheet here. What does it all mean? Now, I got this off uh, Robert Kiyosaki's training of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which, you know, and I've just manipulated into what I feel is necessary for me to know. And... 
I'm finding that, you know, this sort of information is really, really critical because what is it? We need to actually lift our assets that create cash flow. We need to limit our expenses and limit our liabilities. And with our incomes, we want incomes from many different sources. So all of our assets will drive into income. And from income, we can then pay down our expenses and out it goes that way there. Um, so there will be some liabilities that will go into our assets and income and out. Some of them people have only got income to expenses and nothing of the assets and liabilities. So you'd know that you'd have to increase your assets because generally we want to be able to know that by having an asset, it means it's going to create cash flow. It's going to be something we can sell and it's also going to appreciate over time, which means grow its value over time. So that's way better than just getting a single dollar from employment or, or you know, just earned income. So the more assets that make money going into our income area, um, it's going to be way better. And you'll know that if you've got a business or something like that, half of your expenses now can be put off as business expenses. And therefore that sort of calculated in that income and lowered your actual personal expenses. So that's the way that we all should be traveling. So it says, okay, your attained income, which is your cash flow, your total income, it should be increasing. So with all the assets you're going to get, getting cash flow, increasing into your income. Building passive and pol uh, portfolio income, yes, that should be increasing as well. How much do you spend on nonsense spending? Try and keep that a bit more lower. Nonsense spending is what we call nonsense. So your passive plus, plus your portfolio income um, and your financial tracker assets. So what's your return on assets? You've got your passive income, your portfolio income, plus your tr financial tracker assets. And that should be increasing over time. And how long could you survive on this sort of um, wealth and equity that you have? Now, this is really interesting because it's measured in not only in years, but also in months. And you can actually sort of see that, yeah, you'd be fine for so a little bit of time here and there, but without extra sort of growing and so forth, it will dry up pretty quickly with your lifestyle unless you've got to a point where you're meeting more than what your expenses are. And that's the key, guys. The key is spend less than you make. And that way we all grow your wealth. You're also looking at using the ability to compound interest wherever possible. So the longer you can do it over your lifetime, the more successful you're going to be at the end of your lifetime. All right. Have a good day.